Well, good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another dynamite Bill Crane report with my friend Chris Gleason at my side. Uh, we have our flags flying today, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of good stuff. And Chris is going to kick things off with a couple of public service announcements. <laughs> well, just to remind you that May 1st is the town election, and for selectmen, there's going to be one opening for three years, and the contestants are Scott Bugby and Kevin Kalut. Is that how you say his name? Calcut? Uh, Calcook. Okay. And the other place that's being contested is the Norfolk School Committee, where we're looking for two people for three-year seats. Mark Flaherty, who's currently on the board, Medola Champagne, and Jennifer Wynn are going to be running. And no I, contests in any of the other? All the others are incumbent, no, no contests. And isn't that sad? Well, we're lucky that these people are sticking to it. As far as I can tell, they're all the others are just holding steady. But if you want to check, you can go on the town internet, town of Norfolk website. But the other thing I'd like to draw your attention to is Article 16, which is going to be read at the town meeting on May 6th, I believe. No, May 8th at 7 o'clock at the middle school. Uh, Article 16 has to do with the exercise aerobic studio. And what they're asking for a change is from it being changed from lowercase letters to uppercase letters. And you would think, oh, well, that's nothing. But the, the case of the words is significant. Uh -huh. If it's in lowercase, that means it's going to be looked at closely. If it's uppercase, it's assumed to be okay. It doesn't have to be checked. It's assumed just, by whom? By the town. So, I see. as it reads now with the lower case, they can have massage as an accessory use. And I think that needs to be looked at each time and not automatically approved because of what's happening on 123 Seekonk Street because they're having like an accessory activity with barrel shooting and things like that. That's an agricultural, more or less an accessory activity. Whereas in the exercise aerobic studio, massage could be included as an accessory material, exercise or material. The massage could be used as an exercise, as, sorry, as an accessory, but it doesn't say how much of an accessory. Like, I think they need to determine what accessory means. Does that mean 1% of the facility or 20%? Or it could be an accessory and be a huge accessory and the exercise aerobics just be a small part and the massage be accessory, but it, a larger portion. What, what guidance are we getting from the town fathers on this? Oh, I don't know. They're adopting the strong silent stance? I think I heard that the um, advisory committee debate it, and they seem to think that it's going to be okay. Yeah, this uh, really sounds to me like something that really requires a lot of debate. Um, there's got to be something more important than this to debate, isn't there? Well, it's a small thing, but also the agricultural activity down on 123 Sea Country is a small thing. It's just an accessory to the agricultural. But when you think, when you're getting a permit for agricultural, you don't think of these small accessories. Then uh, help me with this. If we just said, yeah, 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 just pass a stupid thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that massage would be acceptable? Right, but I think some people feel that we, we get like, uh, sometimes massage parlors have a different connotation to them. And I don't think people would want to be living next to a massage parlor necessarily. Hmm. 
Like the red light district? Well, do we have one of those? Well, I, not yet. But I think that if people in town are going to segregate marijuana recreational use areas, I should think that they would still want to have control over where they put massage. Pounds. All I'm asking for is that they keep it the way it is where it has to have a special permit where they have more of a control over what the accessories are versus just saying, who, okay, you can do it. Who does they get a permit from? They would have to go to, uh, I think, the planning board. Oh, uh, that's great. I haven't had a lot of success with the planning board. <laughs> Why? What have you tried? <laughs> That's another subject for oh, okay. another day. Another day. A huh? long another day. day. Uh, but now it's... You know, it used to be in the old days, we had something called the appeals board. Remember the appeals board? Well, we have an appeals board. The zoning board of appeals. Uh, well... Before that, we had sort of a generic sort of thing. Okay. And you could go get relief. Right. Uh, and they were sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you, you need an extra 100 square feet to build? I mean, you almost got an acre. Yeah, we'll give you a variance. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why not? Right. What the heck? It's not going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But now it's... Well, uh, if you don't have the 100 feet, you're out, you're dead. No, see, I, I don't see it that way. I see it just the opposite way. I see that every, everything that they, people go up to appeal for, they get. It's like, at first they say, no, 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 and then they look at it a little closer and a little closer, and then they say, okay, you can have it. So Obviously, we don't. they must have a prettier smile or something than I do because... Uh, Ah. Well, maybe the board changes over years, too. It's not it always shouldn't. the same people. But it shouldn't. But it's not the same people. I mean, it's regulations. It's one way or the other. Yeah, but it's not anymore. Is that good? No. No. Oh. Anyway. Getting down to brass tacks, yes. Well, first thing I would like to do is to say that the nation is much poorer with the passing of Barbara Bush. Oh. She was a wonderful woman. And to see her vilified uh, today really? or yesterday. Oh, uh, I'm surprised. Oh, uh, a professor, a tenured professor of English at Fresno State in the golden state of California. <laughs> Her name is Randa Jara. And she said, quote, I, well, not quite quote, but I get it almost correct. Barbara Bush was generous and smart. Um, uh, this isn't perfect English, but this is what I got from her release. Okay. Barbara Bush was generous and smart, amazing racist, who along with her husband raised a war criminal. I'm glad the witch is dead and can't wait for the rest of her family to fall to their demise Ooh. the way 1.5 million Iraqis have. Wow. So, Joseph Castro who must be a dynamite guy, I'd love to meet him someday, is the president of Fresno. Now, do you think he said, all right, you're out of here. You're a nutbag. Go away. No, no. He did say, though, that he heard from a lot of big donors to mm -hmm. Fresno State so here is his hard-hitting reply. Well, watch out for this because this is hot stuff. Okay. I know, talking about the donors, I know where they're coming from. 
I'm asking them for understanding here as we work through the complexities of this issue. Now, there is a man. <laughs> I, I, that guy has really got it going. I just can't believe that woman said that. But I would like to say something about Barbara Bush. I'd like to read a little something. Okay. Barbara Bush. And where are you reading this from? The Globe. Okay. Barbara Bush um, was not the Cl uh, Wellesley's um, you know, college. Uh, there was not the, her fir their first choice for their commencement speaker back in the 90s. But the original uh, choice, Alice Walker, uh, declined. Yeah. So Barbara Bush came there. And after she was invited, 150 students circulated a petition saying, Bush was a poor choice for the all-woman's college because she had gained recognition through the achievements of her husband, which contravenes what we've been taught over the last four years. Furthermore, she had dropped out of the Smith College after two years to marry the future president, George H.W. Bush. That was bad, too, I guess. <laughs> so the controversy kind of bubbled up. So Barbara spoke for 11 minutes, and she took the petition head on. She poked more gentle fun at herself than at her critics. She urged graduates to choose their own path mm -hmm. and not to let others define it for them evoking the spirit of tolerance to counter those who protested that she was a poor choice for a speaker. Here are some of the highlights of what she said. I hope many of you will consider making three very special choices. The first is to believe in something larger than yourself, to get involved in some of the big ideas of our time. I chose literacy because I honestly believed that if more people could read, write, and comprehend, we would be that much closer to solving so many of the problems that plague our nation and our society. She's famous for saying that. And early on, I made another choice, which I hope you will take make as well. Whether you're talking about education, career, or service, you were talking about life, and life really must have joy. It's supposed to be fun. One of the reasons I made the most important decision of my life to marry George Bush is because he made me laugh. It's true, sometimes we laugh through our tears, but that shared laughter has been one of our strongest bonds. Find the joy in life, because as Far Ferris Bueller said on his day off, life moves pretty fast, and if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you're going to miss it. The third choice that must not be missed is to cherish your human connections, your relationships with family and friends. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a child, a friend, or a parent. Whatever the era, whatever the times, one thing will never change, fathers and mothers. And if you have children, they must come first. You must read to your children. You must hug your children. You must love your children. Your success as a family, our success as a society, depends not on what happens in the White House, but what happens inside your house. Bush then delivered a zinger to close the, her speech. Who knows? Somewhere out in this audience, 
may even be someone who will one day follow in my footsteps and preside over the White House as the president's spouse. And I wish him well. <laughs> the crowd of 5,000 gave her a standing mm. ovation. This is common sense stuff, wonderfully delivered. Mm -hmm. This And we it, need to hear more of that. This is a loss to our country. Hopefully we'll remember her words. I think we will. She was a terrific lady. Um, well, the, uh, I guess I got things a little bit out of order here, so we'll just go with what we got. Why not? Um, I'm 100% police. Okay. Okay? Always have been. Mm hmm But when a cop breaks the law, mm -hmm. so much more is given to him in, in authority and standing in the community that when he breaks the law, he has to answer to the thought that so much more was expected of him. I think that's true of teachers, too. Yeah. I don't like to see these guys getting off and walking. This guy was drunk. He attacked an Uber driver, called them all kinds of vile, racist names, and then stole the car. And beat the hell out of the guy. Told him he was a cop. The judge um, got, gave him three years of probation. Oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, oh, and uh, also really piled it on with some community service to be served at food banks or serving the poor lunches. It's not gonna make an impression, is it? This, the, the district attorney had sought a two and a half year prison term with six months to serve and the balance suspended during a five year period of probation. Even that is a pretty light sentence for something like this. He walks. Don't think it's right. It's not. Nope. And if Dwayne was ever here, <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne would have put him 10 years away. But, well then we've got uh, another. Another question yeah. about that. Should he be allowed to be a cop again? No. Will he be? He's Does been, it say he's that? He's been suspended. Well, suspended uh, means you can go back. Yeah, but uh, suspended without pay. Um, and, yeah, well, this is tough. He's got to remain alcohol free, complete anger management and alcohol treatment, and get a lot of this now. Perform 100 hours of community service at the Greater Boston Food Bank. Talk about hard time. I think they're dreaming about this guy. I do too. Um, I think those programs are good, but to have all that. Yeah, I think in a, another uh, one of these articles leading up to this, uh, I believe uh, he, I know he had been suspended without pay. Mm. And um, I think before they could fire him, I think they had to wait for this, whether he was found guilty or not. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what civil service is. But I shouldn't think that he should be allowed to be a policeman no, again. No, no, they took his badge and gun. Mm. Which is symbolic, but nonetheless. Um, now, we have this case. Um, Sean Gannon, 32 years old, 
down in Yarmouth was serving, we talked about this last week, right. serving a warrant. Right. Now, we find out that um, this fellow had, was a career ki criminal, Thomas Latinowicz, served, uh, had more than a hundred cases against him. A litany of charges for stabbings, drugs, and gun offenses. He largely avoided jail time until 2014. Um, and I think he was tossed for a year or two then. But I mean, 2005, negligent operation of a motor vehicle. 2005, two counts of larceny of a motor vehicle. Uh, the first thing he was cleared of, second one, both counts were dismissed. Uh, assault, September 2005, assault with a dangerous weapon. Two counts of malicious, malicious damage to a motor vehicle, disorderly conduct, dismissed. Possession of marijuana, continued without a finding. Armed robbery, case later dismissed. Two counts of filing a false crime report. Three counts of making a bomb or a hijacking threat. One count of conspiracy. He pleaded guilty to the false crime report and all the other charges were dropped. Possession of cocaine with intent to distribute, conspiracy to violate drug laws, dismissed. Assault and battery, dismissed. Assault and battery, malicious destruction of property, both counts, dismissed. Violating a restraining order, threatening to commit a crime, and witness intimidation. Can you guess what happened here? Dismissed. Assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Acquitted after a bench trial. Meaning no jury, just right. a judge. Driving on a suspended license, possessing a Class B drug with intent to distribute, possessing a Class D drug, the drug counts were dismissed. The license charge was continued without a finding. Assault with a dangerous weapon and malicious destruction of property. Dismissed. Vandalized property. Dismissed. Assault and battery and malicious destruction of property. Dismissed. Two counts of carrying a gun without an FID card. One count of unlawful storage of a firearm. Pleaded guilty to all charges which were dropped. Threatening to commit a crime. Dismissed. Possession of marijuana. Dismissed. Improper firearm storage. Carrying a gun without an FID card. Defacing a serial number on a firearm. Acquitted after a bench trial. Two counts of possessing a firearm without an FID card. The resolution of the case is not immediately available. <laughs> this was 2009, and they can't figure out what happened. Eight, you mean? Uh, no, 2009. What do you mean 2009? Oh, this, 2009, this goes back right. To okay, 2009. Okay. Nine years ago, and they cannot figure out what the resolution of the case was. Again in 2009, heroin trafficking, receiving told stolen property, resolution not immediately available. This got swept under the rug, too. So is he taking this all to the same court? I don't think so. Possession of marijuana, intent to distribute, nothing on that. Uh, carrying a dangerous weapon, pleaded guilty and sentenced to a prison term. Unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle, negligent operations, using a motor vehicle without authority, speeding, unlicensed, response, uh, blah, blah, blah. Everything was dismissed. 
Assault and battery of a pregnant woman. Strangulation or suffocation of a pregnant woman and vandalizing property. The case was dismissed after the alleged victim asserted her Fifth Amendment privilege. Uh -huh. December 2016, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and attempting to commit a crime. Both counts were dismissed. He was accused of trying to rob Kevin Roby at knife point. So, how would you like to sit down with all the judges that dismissed all of this and ask them what in heaven's name they were thinking of? I mean, if this is not an outrage, I mean, Look, if this is the best judges can do, let's get rid of the whole damn bunch of them and go to elected judges. They couldn't possibly be any worse than these political appointments. So there is no way of connecting the dots? Each case is judged separately? Oh, yeah. I mean, these aren't I, all just one case. This right, I understand is over that, and over but, yeah, and over. But what I'm saying is, when you try a case, you're not allowed to refer back to other cases. Of course you are. You they are. present his record, sure. So why weren't all these cases connected? You would have to ask the court system and the judges. The judges take this into consideration when they establish bail and when they, when, when they send somebody. You know, I mean, with, com with computers today, they should be able to have a repertoire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How about this uh, business about the third strike? When you're, uh, yeah, right. yeah. yeah, when you're grabbed for a gun offense for the third time, this guy's got gun offenses all over the place. So, what goes on in the courts? I mean, how in the devil can we have an orderly society if we treat bums like this guy in this fashion? Keep on releasing him. Send him out. So obviously he did some more crimes. These guys were after him with warrants for right. his arrest. And so, bango. Now this brings up another point. And I don't have this stuff in order because I changed things around. <laughs> uh, Joe Fitzgerald, the best writer on the Herald, best writer in Boston. Another hero gunned down doing his job, talking about this young man. He was attempting to serve a warrant for parole violation to a suspect who at 29 already had 125 criminal charges on his probation record. What do you suppose the storyline would be this morning if Gannon had fired first? You know the answer, don't you? Of course. Marauders would have hit the streets to rail against trigger-happy police. The way it works these days, a lawman has to die before he's seen as a good guy. <laughs> Wayne Anderson, a popular Boston cop, was off duty the day he approached a driver barreling down a one-way street. The driver shot him and killed him. Um, the minister at the Roxbury AME Church was talking about Anderson's death at his funeral. Mm -hmm. And he said, talking about how Wayne had acted responsibly and said, but if Wayne had shot first, all we'd be hearing about is police brutality. Um, the, so to sum it up, that's what 
Sean Gannon was doing last Thursday, well aware of the risks inherent in encountering a malevolent lawbreaker. Undeterred, he ended his watch by doing his job, and in doing so, reaffirmed there is no greater love than laying down one's life for others. That's what this young lawman did for us. Now, I must tell you this, and we've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again. Okay. So you've got a, you're chasing a guy. There's been a, 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 a armed robbery, and the guy flees on foot, goes down this dark alley. So you chase him down there, and he turns at you, and he points at you. The cops shoot him and kill him. He had a cell phone in his hand. Who's wrong? The guy who's running away because he's the guilty one. Absolutely. And in the dark, or in a nanosecond, you mean to tell me when he whirls like this, you're going to say, oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, that looks like a cell phone. Boom, boom. Oh, I'm dead. seems to me mm -hmm. the cop has got to protect himself as well as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And when someone takes an aggressive act or action, he's got to react. It, ah. Well, I can't understand why somebody would stop if they're being chased, would stop with a cell phone. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Well, well, now, the cell phones are about the size of a loaf of bread now. They all carry, a lo I will say all, a lot of them carry them in their hands now. Right. But what I'm saying is, if somebody I was chasing stopped and faced me, I would think that they would have a gun, because why wouldn't they just keep on running to get away from well, me? Well, of course, now it could be down a blind alley where um, he's, he's run out of room. There's nothing else. There's nowhere for him to go. <laughs> but by the same token, you drop the gun and you go like this. You know, I watch the live cops on Friday night and Saturday night, mm -hmm. 9 to 12 on A&E. Mm -hmm. Most of this, a lot of it is silly. But yet there are a lot of guys, they stop, that jump out of the car and run. Right. And do stupid things <laughs> because they've got a warrant. Mm. Or because, uh, well, they get some pot in their pocket mm. that they could get a ticket for. They don't even arrest them for it. Yep. And it becomes a life and death thing. So, because uh, yeah, I think what I'm trying to get at is a lot of these ne'er do wells are not graduates of the Wharton School. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I don't understand it. So, on that note, we'll go on to the next mess. Uh, oh, this, I like this one. This is, of all the articles, this is my favorite. Oh. Now, Mayor Kevin White, uh, uh, not Kevin White, Martin Walsh, Marty Walsh. Okay. I lost my head there for a minute. Remember <laughs> Kevin from heaven? Um, the, they had a homeless facility on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And there was the Long Island Bridge. Right. And Marty shut it down. Right. Because it was weak. Right. Supposedly. So after, let's see, this was a couple of years ago, and Marty just released plans to build a new one and asked for funding. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty darn good sized chunk of change, too. $92 million. He's asking for that. So, now, and they want to build a really first-class facility for homeless and drug offenders and that sort of thing on Long Island. Not a bad idea. I mean, you got the property there. That It's away from neighborhoods. Um, I think it's the right place to put something like that. Okay. So what could go wrong with this idea? 
Well, first of all, they need to fix the bridge. Oh, they're going to destroy it. No, they're going to tear it down and build a new bridge. Okay. 93 million bucks. Just for the bridge? Just for the bridge? I'm sorry. $92 million for the bridge. Well, that's a And relief. it's going to take three years to do. Okay? So what could go wrong with this plan? All right? Well, how about if the mayor of Quincy mm -hmm. objects and says, uh, has proposed, Quincy Mayor Thomas Cook has proposed a city ordinance that would ban commercial vehicles such as construction trucks from roads that lead to Long Island. Oh where Boston is looking to reestablish addiction rehabilitation programs. Now, Cook, way over here at the end. Cook, Quincy must have a seat at the table deciding how this is going to go down. But it's only going to be for three years. It's not like it's permanent. Right. Right, yeah, three years is all Cook needs. Because this is nothing more, nothing less than I want to work with the contractors oh, too. Oh, yeah. I want to be able to choose my friends to do the work. Oh, definitely, definitely. I want my money. Right. I heard a story a month ago about Providence, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and what is holding up a project down there is that one of the really high uh, members of government mm -hmm. is holding out for five million rather than the three million that's been offered. For what? The licenses, the permits, oh. the zoning approvals. In other words, bang, <laughs> project approved. Give me my five. Now, the source of this story, I don't know, but I know it goes down down there. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, but this is all this is all about. I want to be in here. I want to sit at the table here when we talk to these guys, and I want to talk about the permits that they'll require to get here in Quincy. And oh, you want to play hardball? The well, price just went up, buddy. So, you uh, one Marty Walls can't override the Quincy. They can't. Doesn't have that power. The trucks have to go through Quincy. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. But doesn't he, isn't there a hierarchy of power? Don't think so. I don't think the selectman from Franklin could come to Norfolk and say, I uh, don't like what you're doing up there on uh, Miller Street on the Franklin-Norfolk oh. line, so knock it off. So Marty Walls just has the Boston area. He, it's confined. Exactly. Quincy isn't considered... Yeah. Part of the greater right, Boston. Right, right, yeah. Now, the mayor, they have their own mayor and all that. Um, well, this one you probably, uh, yeah, I've got a few. I wonder small if there's another here. way to get out to the island besides going through Quincy. Well, swimming. Well, ferry. <laughs> swimming. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a, a dock out there. Well, you might be able to build a dock cheaper than the bridge. <laughs> I don't know. But. The, but. Anywho. It's interesting how they had to go, the tactic that they're using. Boston politics. They must have lied awake night trying to figure out how can we get into this. I think they got a pretty good script that they work off of. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you go into Boston and you want to get a permit. Um, <clears throat> I want to put a addition on my house. Mm. Well... You know, you 
figure you go to the building inspector and he says, okay, now let's look at your plans and yeah, these look all right, okay. So uh, go uh, down to City Hall and it'll be 150 bucks uh, for a permit mm -hmm. and you're good to go. I'll be survey. I'll be supervising this, mm -hmm. and you should be great. But it ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that at mm -hmm. all. Well, you know, you're gonna have to go to the building inspector, and he's a miserable oh, SOB. Yeah, they always are. So listen, he's a friend of mine. Oh. So look, maybe I don't. Know, if you give me a thousand bucks. 500 for me, 500 for him. I think I can get this permit in your hands in about two days. Otherwise, good luck. So what's the guy gonna say? All right. Yeah. Once he coughs up the thousand, then watch what happens when the electrical inspector comes <laughs> and the plumbing inspector comes. Oh boy. All right, well here's something you'll, I think you'll find this of great interest. Mice that live in the basements of New York City apartment buildings carry disease-causing bacteria, antibiotic resistant bugs, and viruses that have never been seen before. They've been examining mouse droppings, <laughs> and they are very scared by what they've found. And this is in New York City. Yeah. I wonder if it's because of a lot of immigration and uh, different countries' boats. Bring, in, the, bring in their own mice? <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> I know they do. That's how the rats got here. Right. And I, I heard an interesting thing the other night on the television that they're now thinking that Lyme disease is not carried by deer ticks, but f by mice. I suspect there's a chain. Okay, now I know the deer ticks are on the deer. I know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, are they the ones that c cause the disease? Damn. I know you're... We're almost trying to reinvent the football here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, you know, it's... We know so little about Lyme disease. I've had it numerous times. Oh. Lucky, aren't I? Yeah, well, <laughs> it survives. I guess it can be quite debilitating if it's not treated. You, you get that part right. Lisa from Home Solar Solutions called me the other night. Um, and I stopped her. And I told her that if God had intended us to use sun power, he wouldn't have given us electricity. She called me an idiot and hung up. <laughs> yeah. Now, I thought that was kind of rude. Oh, really? Yeah. So listen, if uh, Lisa calls any of you people, treat her gently because she's kind of got a hair trigger temper. We certainly don't want. Now, another thing on TV that really makes me mad. Coast One is the name of a company. Oh. And you know what they do? No. If you fall behind mm -hmm. and you owe a bunch of money to the IRS, mm -hmm. they'll go and negotiate it down for you. Yeah. We know all the tricks. So they have this couple standing there. He's kind of daffy looking, and she's a blonde and smiling. And so anyway, she's, she said, we fell behind on our business and personal taxes, but Coast One negotiated our tax liability from $42,000 down to $294. And with that, she goes, <laughs> And he's going, now, what's wrong with this picture? People aren't paying their full share of what they owe for taxes. Bingo. And guess who is paying it? Oh, we're paying for we're them. We're paying it. I'm sure. And they're smiling, not at, because they've pulled off a deal. They're laughing at us. Oh, no, well. They're saying, Billy, look at this smile. That's because you're paying. I don't think they think that far. 
<sighs> you underestimate them. They're horrible. But a lot of the times they do get rid of the interest off of the loans, so it, off of the taxes. So they end up paying what they really owe for taxes. It's just that they're not paying the interest that accumulated yeah. over the years. Yeah. While they ignored the fact that they owed the money. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I also, uh, uh, oh, the, yeah, all right. This may have been one of those rare moments when the IRS misinterpreted the law. And these people were charged $42,000, and they shouldn't have been. Mm. But I notice they don't have any more people on. It's just these two saps. <laughs> um, now, folks, I shan't listen to any complaining about gas prices. In London, a gallon of gasoline is now $6.50. Mm. So there. Well, it makes people not drive around so much, which is good. Less pollution. Um, yeah, but less fun. <laughs> less fun. Uh, but they get to uh, pay for their health care, and uh, they're paying well over double what we're paying for national health care, okay, because that's what's causing this huge differential. Really? Oh, yeah, because that's how they pay for it, as part of it is the gas tax. Oh. Um, I'd like to read to you a very short editorial out of the Herald. Some crimes merit death penalty. Oh, dear. The death penalty would be a fitting end to Thomas Latinowicz, that's the guy, if he is found guilty in the slaying of Yarmouth police officer Sean Gannon. He has an immense criminal record, including recent arrest for strangling a pregnant woman and stabbing a man at a traffic light. Fortunately, unfortunately, there is no stomach for capital punish punishment on Beacon Hill. Opponents fear an innocent man could be executed and suggest the death penalty is not a deterrent to crime. It is a deterrent to crime. The guy you execute is never going to kill anybody again. <laughs> our justice system is imperfect in preventing collateral damage, and our system sentencing should always be a concern. But it is absurd to uh, posit that the death penalty cannot be a deterrent. Who are the respondents of such a survey? How can we prove a negative? Across the country, if the death penalty is ineffective, it is because it is never implemented properly, with many on death row for decades, long after the impact of an execution would resonate with the people. Remember what I said last week? Guy like this, the army method. Okay, have a very short, like court martial, guilty, firing squad the next morning. That's it. I, I, I don't think it's fair to pe leave people on death row for a long period no, of time. No, 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 a couple of weeks. I, I don't think it tops. serves any purpose either for the person who's surviving or for the people who are keeping him. Yeah, I know. I tend to agree with you. Uh, I'm totally against it, and it's expensive as all get out. Um, yeah, we're going to have enough time. All right. So, guess what? I don't know. I got a letter from Clean Choice Energy. Okay. Massachusetts resident returned by 531 2018, or we are going to come to your house and beat your wife senseless. <laughs> well, that not going to mess with me. No. Um, Shucks. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an important message for Massachusetts residents. If you pay your Eversource bill, you can choose clean energy. So what you can do is if you fill this out, mm -hmm. this forces Eversource to only pipe clean energy into your house. How can they possibly do that? 
It's, you're beginning to sniff out the fact that this might be a scam. Mm -hmm. So, once you get through all the crap, let me point out to you something. If you use 250 kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. okay, in a month, you would pay Clean Choice Energy $43. Okay. The standard offer with the dirty stuff, you would pay $32.89. 25% less. And it goes 86 down to 65.79, 172 down to 131, and 344 down to 263 as you ramp up more and more. But to answer your question, how do you get the clean energy? Well, you can't. And the person next to you gets the dirty. Yeah. I, I mean, this you is can't differentiate it. Absolutely ridiculous. So. Uh, it, it is just, it's ridiculous. All, basically, all they're doing is billing you. Everything else stays the same with Eversource. Eversource takes care of the power. They pipe it into your house. If something goes wrong, Eversource comes and fixes the wires. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But... When you pay your bill, you send it to us, and then we pay Eversource. I mean, how stupid do they think? Well, I shouldn't say that. Well, how stupid do they think people are? I know how stupid people are. They sign up for this kind of Well, crap. they think they're, they're helping the environment. Yeah, I know. I know. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um... By the way, by the way, I'm, I'm a walking, talking contradiction, okay? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm willing to buy off on that. But the windmills out in California, mm -hmm. they're high up on mountaintops mm -hmm. and ridges and mm -hmm. everything, generate a lot of electricity. Okay. They also kill oh. eagles. Yeah. Raptors fly with their head down looking for mice and rabbits and that sort of thing. They don't see the windmill. They fly into it. We're not going to put any mesh around it. We're not going to do anything. Tough stuff on the eagles. You know, I asked that question when they first put them up, and they said, oh, it's, they're not going to bother the birds at all. That's baloney. Now, we don't have as many golden eagles around here. We'll get hawks. Mm, they're I raptors. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, who cares about hawks? I mean, they chase my little bluebirds around. Good, I don't want the hawks anyway. You know, there's people that are strange, I'll tell you. Um, so, shall we finish up quickly on Chappaquiddick? Have you been tempted to go see the movie Chappaquiddick? Not at all. Talking to a couple of people and reading a bunch of reviews mm -hmm. They say it is as I thought. It's well balanced. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, and there was something in the Globe or the Herald, I forget which, that I saw. And they said, people walking out said, you know, I knew all that. And yet we kept electing that guy. We can't what? We kept electing that guy, Ted Kennedy. Oh, yeah. Showed in the movie. He left her in the car to die. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't uh, he? You know, I get a kick out of it because when he, uh, the, the first story broke, the first one there when uh, Goggin was his mouthpiece. Well, he dove back in a couple yeah, of times. That, and yeah. da, da, da. Apparently, he didn't. Now, the police chief mm -hmm. down there on the island mm -hmm. was from Walpole. Oh. Um, and 
he came up sometime afterwards, mm -hmm. and he came into the police station because he knew um, the police chief. And they talked, and he, I don't really feel comfortable saying what he said, but uh, he said, uh, one of the things I can tell you, he said, about 15 minutes after it happened, mm. it was taken out of my hands and I was told oh, to go home. Oh, yeah. You're not to be involved in this. Oh, yeah. He said, so, I wasn't involved. He said, and anything they said that I said is a lie. Oh. He said, because I have never said anything. The major concern was the, the cover-up. I mean, he didn't go and report it right away. Nine hours. And he consulted the advisors. His, his what lawyer. To do. The consigliere of the mm. Kennedy family. Uh, you know, how? And you know what? I've got to believe in this state, most people knew in their heart, mm. that's what happened. But yet they went in the, the room and kept on pulling that lever for them. I'll never understand that, ever. But he was a good, I don't know what, he was senator, was he? He was a good senator and he did a lot for the people. I tell you what, maybe for next week's show you could write up a list of what he accomplished because I can't think of anything he accomplished. Well, I've always heard that he helped out a lot of people. Uh, I can tell you that the uh, uh, immigration bill was a horror show and we're still living with it. We can't get rid of it. That was his idea. Uh, now I Listen, everybody said he's a hard-working guy. Mm-hmm. He's a hard drinking guy, too. <laughs> All right? Sometimes uh, they go together. Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. Well, anyway, folks, um, I think I got to one page out of what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so, look, you're just going to have to come back next week and check us out because find out where it was I didn't talk about this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I think spring is going to come. Uh, Probably um, in May. Is that your prediction? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have spring this year, really? <laughs> I don't know. All I know is the long-range forecast is still nights in the 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. so. so, friends, keep smiling, and it'll, it'll who knows, maybe this is the, either the beginning of the Ice Age or <laughs> just spring is being delayed. But anyway... Have a good time, be kind to each other, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Later.